Jack always thought only of himself. He lived alone in a small apartment and worked as a salesman at a local electronics store. His co-workers didn't like him much because he never helped anyone and always tried to get the best sales for himself. One day at work, his manager Sarah called him into her office. Jack, we need to talk about your attitude, Sarah said with a frown. What do you mean? My sales numbers are great, Jack replied. Sarah shook her head. It's not about the numbers. Your coworkers say you never help them and you're not a team player. Jack shrugged. That's not my problem. I'm here to make money, not friends. Sarah leaned forward, her expression serious. Jack, being part of a team means helping each other, not being selfish and only looking out for yourself. Jack crossed his arms, unmoved. I don't see how that affects my job performance. Sarah sighed. Jack, if you don't change, I might have to let you go. Jack left the office feeling angry. He didn't care what others thought of him. That night, he went to bed without giving the conversation another thought. The next morning, Jack woke up to a strange noise. He looked out his window and saw a moving truck outside. His neighbor, old Mrs. Wilson, was being helped into a car by her son. Jack frowned. Mrs. Wilson had lived next door for years, but he had never spoken to her. He shrugged and got ready for work. As he left his apartment, he noticed a piece of paper on the ground. It was a letter addressed to him from Mrs. Wilson. Curious, he opened it and read, Dear Jack, I'm moving to a nursing home today. I've lived here for 30 years, and you've been my neighbor for the last five. In all that time, you never once said hello or offered to help me with anything. I'm an old woman, and sometimes I need help carrying groceries or reaching high shelves. But you always looked away when you saw me. I'm writing this letter because I believe everyone has goodness in them. Maybe you've forgotten how to be kind. I hope one day you remember. Life is so much better when you care about others. Goodbye, Mrs. Wilson. Jack felt a strange feeling in his chest. Was it guilt? He had never thought about how his actions affected others. He crumpled up the letter and threw it away, trying to ignore the uncomfortable feeling. At work that day, Jack couldn't concentrate. He kept thinking about Mrs. Wilson's letter and Sarah's warning. During his lunch break, he overheard two co-workers talking. Did you hear about Tom's son? One asked. He's in the hospital. Tom's really worried. Jack knew Tom. He was an older salesman who always had a kind word for everyone. Without thinking, Jack walked over to them. Is Tom's son okay? He asked. The co-workers looked surprised that Jack was talking to them. He needs a special medicine, but it's very expensive, one explained. Tom's trying to figure out how to pay for it. Jack nodded and walked away. He spent the rest of the day thinking about Tom and Mrs. Wilson. When it was time to leave, he made a decision. The next morning, Jack arrived at work early. He went to Sarah's office and knocked on the door. Come in, Sarah called. Jack entered and took a deep breath. Sarah, I want to donate half of my commission from yesterday's big sale to help Tom's son. Sarah's eyes widened in shock. Jack, that's very generous of you. But why? Jack explained about Mrs. Wilson's letter and how it made him realize he needed to change. I want to be a better person, he finished. Sarah smiled. That's wonderful, Jack. I'm proud of you. Over the next few weeks, Jack made an effort to be friendlier to his co-workers. He helped new employees learn the ropes and offered to cover shifts when someone needed time off. To his surprise, he found that he enjoyed being helpful. One day, Tom approached Jack with tears in his eyes. Jack, I don't know how to thank you, he said. The medicine you helped pay for is working. My son is getting better. Jack felt a warmth in his chest. I'm so glad, he said sincerely. How is he doing? Tom told Jack all about his son's recovery. For the first time, Jack truly listened to someone else's story and felt happy for them. As the months passed, Jack's co-workers noticed the change in him. They started inviting him to lunch and after-work gatherings. Jack found that he enjoyed having friends and being part of a team. One Saturday, Jack decided to volunteer at a local senior center. 
As he was helping serve lunch, he saw a familiar face. Mrs. Wilson, he said in surprise. The old woman looked up at him and smiled. Jack, is that you? Jack sat down next to her. Mrs. Wilson, I want to thank you for the letter you wrote me. It changed my life. Mrs. Wilson patted his hand. I'm so glad to hear that, dear. Tell me all about it. Jack spent the afternoon talking with Mrs. Wilson, sharing how her words had inspired him to be a better person. As he left the senior center, he felt a happiness he had never known before. From that day on, Jack continued to look for ways to help others. He volunteered regularly, became a mentor to new employees at work, and even organized a neighborhood watch program in his apartment building. One year after Mrs. Wilson's letter, Sarah called Jack into her office again. Jack, she said with a smile, I want to offer you a promotion to manager. Your leadership and teamwork have been outstanding this year. Jack was overwhelmed with gratitude. Thank you, Sarah. I couldn't have done it without the support of everyone here. As he left Sarah's office, Jack realized how much his life had changed. He was no longer the selfish person he used to be. He had friends, a sense of purpose, and a happiness that came from caring about others. All it took was one letter to open his eyes and change his heart. Ptanzi. Crumple something up. Ba. Rocheng yituan. Phrasal verb. To crush a piece of paper until all of it is folded. Learn the ropes. Idiom. To learn how to do a job or activity.